And and that is what so many people do. It's like slow growth. I'm stuck. You know, it's like I can't get out of this cycle. I am super excited about our next guest. I uh, I don't know how to articulate the wow factor with this man, but um, he's become a personal friend of mine. He is one of my personal coaches, one of the best in the world. Uh, I want to welcome to the show the master coach, Bert. Thank you, man. How are you? That's a good articulation right there. I feel, I feel good about that. Not bad. Uh, <laughs> long time coming. A uh, lot to dig into today. For those that maybe don't know you or about you, unpack a little bit about yourself for the audience. Found my voice, luckily, very early in life. 15 years old, knew I wanted to be a coach. Okay, I got asked to be a junior pro basketball coach. I was a little point guard. Growing up my whole life, every coach I had said to me, when you grow up, you're going to be a coach. Like I just heard it over and over. So started coaching basketball at 15. You know, got my way into being a a head basketball coach at 18 in elementary school while I was in college. Wow. And then worked my way into being at the second largest high school in Tennessee at 19 while I was in college and became the head coach there at 22. And that was the youngest head coach at the state of Tennessee at the second largest high school. Mm. And I really took over a place that had never won in 30 years, like significantly. Mm. So brought a lot of energy and excitement and what I call prey drive. Took me about 10 years to build that into a national powerhouse. That place would go on to win seven of nine state championships. But I really fell in love with the psychology of inner engineering people, mm. building competitive intelligence, like like activating prey drive in people. So I was always fascinated by that. And even some of my players would say, Coach, you you know, you should go out and speak and, and you like you're good at this. And so I'm like, okay. So I started writing books at twenty five. We're now on book number twenty two. Wow. And uh retired from that at thirty one, mm. <laughs> right in the middle of the 08 recession. Mm. So were you in the mortgage business then? Yep. Okay. I started in 05. Okay. So you know what I'm talking about. Yep. I started this business in the middle of March of 08. Hmm. Retired from being a basketball coach. Boom. Go out to the world. I got three or four books. I'm speaking. And it was mortgage companies, real estate, builders, home builders, uh, insurance companies, title companies, but real big in real estate and mortgage. And those people are like, man, we can't sell a house. We can't sell a mortgage can you help us? Yeah. And I'm like, sure. What do we need? And I, I, and so these companies would hire me and say, you're our coach of the whole company. Come in and, and help us stay in a forward position. Mm. And so that's what I did for the first three or four years of the business. Wow. Corporate coaching. Yeah. Right. And then four years into it go, you know what? I love this. I still do some corporate coaching. But then I started shifting to what if the individual paid for it? Would mm. they have more buy-in? Mm. Would there be more commitment? So I take on a few corporate assignments now. Uh, but it's got to be the right leader. Good, man. Well, your stuff's incredible. You've been helping me. I mean, obviously, you know, 24 is a strange year with the election, everything here and there. It's kind of a bounce back year for some folks. Um, but it seems for you, man, that you really like, you know, you've boomed no matter what over the last few years. Uh, talk to me about how you kind of went from, you know, uh, zero to where you're at now and your success stories. What did you do and what are you doing? What I figured out when I first got into coaching companies mm-hmm. was companies needed the same thing that my teams did, right? They, they needed discipline. They needed structure. They needed focus. They needed accountability. Like they, like what I say, everybody needs a coach in life. Yeah. And I could take teams and there was no way I couldn't improve that team. Mm. I knew with a good coach, people would play at a higher level. Now, would every person know? Depends on how coachable they are, how hungry they are, right? But in the mortgage business, you know, I started coaching. At one time, I was coaching six of the top 10 mortgage originators in the state of Tennessee. So if you had the 10 top people, six of them were in my programs. Mm. But it was different, Brian. It was like business coaching. It was entrepreneurial coaching. It was person of interest. Mm. And they were coming to me going, man, this is different than some of the mortgage coaching I'm getting. And I think that's kind of how I carved out this niche of, I'm really good at packaging, helping people package their intellectual property, like some of the stuff you and I've done, like helping you see this is what you have. Let's pull it out. Let's package it up. Let's separate you from your competitors and and really be different. So that's really what has gotten me to where I am is having a very, what I would call a hard skill, a primary skill of packaging, monetization, Mm. business coaching. And then I've been coached by some of the best people in the world. Yeah. And I think, you know, dude asked me today, like, what makes you different than other coaches? And what makes me different is your past. Mm. 
I was a real coach. I really won championships. I know how to build competitive intelligence in teams. Yeah. I know how to activate prey drive in people. Yeah. You know, and that will result in selling more mortgages. That yeah. will result in, in working harder. So that's really my special skill set. And your latest biggest accomplishment, you love coaching and helping people so much. I want you to tell me and tell everybody. So you've built this place in Nashville for everybody to come hang out. And obviously, I don't want to spoil it. I want you to talk about it called the Greatness Factory. Um, what is it? What was behind it? And why did you do it? What it is, is a unique place to work, okay. learn, okay. grow, connect. I like to say it's where inspiration meets execution. Mm. It's uh, a place where great people come together who want to do business, who want to do bigger things. I always joke and say I didn't build a complacency factory. Right. It's unique. It's different. It's like Walt Disney said, I want something different, magical, and better. Yeah. And that's what the Greatness Factory is. I look at all the co-working spaces. I said they don't have a theater. We have a 109-person state-of-the-art theater. I yes. mean state-of-the-art theater. We got podcast studios. We got cool rooms called the Dream Foundry, the Money Lab. There's been uh, probably several million dollars already raised there between members. Like, like there's no telling how much money will be generated there yeah. between members. Because when you put good people together, it's like, let's do a deal together. Let's raise capital. Let's buy real estate. Let's start this company. And so I had this vision in 2016. I used to tell moms and dads when they brought their kids to me, uh, thank you for bringing your daughter to the Greatness Factory, where we are going to manufacture your daughter's greatness. So I did that for 13 years, right? Building kids. Yep. 2016, God gave me a vision, said, do it for adults. It just came to me one day. You should build greatness factories, places where adults can manufacture their greatness. Mm. And I'm like, okay, let's go do this. And it wasn't easy. <laughs> like oh, no. I tried, I tried it two or three times. I got kicked out of one building because because huh. we had too many people come to an event. Uh, I bought a piece of land for a half a million bucks. I put a, a hundred thousand into the plans. Decided it wasn't the right place. It really took me from 2016 to 2024. Wow to get that first one going. But it's worth it. But it's worth it. Man. And I see it online. I'm coming to visit you soon. It's just, I feel like when you can get everybody in that place together, uh, there's no way that you can't be better. And then what happens is it kind of breeds like a good bar or a good club or a good place yeah. to hang out. People hear about it. You get in there and you can feel the energy. Yeah. You get a lot of business people together in a spot like that. Uh, I'd be shocked in a few years if there wasn't a line out the door waiting to either get in there or you know rent, yeah. rent a space from you. I think it's an awesome idea, especially in a time where you know COVID suppressed the workforce when you know coming in the office, yeah. right? It's hard to get people to come in so if they're going to come in a place like yours is just 10x and i think it's great for those that like it but i i commend you for getting that um i, I just think it's great and you've got ideas to maybe open these other places right yeah i believe in intentional congruence and intentional congruence is where everything feeds everything okay i love real estate i've always loved real estate cool real estate inspiring real estate so it's like how do i purchase real estate that's always appreciated for me in value I've never personally gone wrong in real estate. The time I bought it, you look at the greatness factor. I bought it for three point six million. Um, the building it appraised at seven point three million before I even moved in it. Great feeling. Is in downtown Nashville. There's no way it's not going to appreciate. Yep. Uh, so every piece of real estate I purchased, I use for coaching. Yeah. I use my house in Florida for coaching. Yeah. I got a, a big lodge in Tennessee, big I've eight thousand square it's foot amazing. lodge. You've been there, and it's like, how do I combine? my love of coaching people with my love of real estate. Mm -hmm. And that is called intentional congruence. I don't buy storage units. Uh, I'm, I am involved in multifamily deal right now. My first multifamily deal, 247 units in Kentucky. But I got kind of like, hey, will you help us raise some capital? Yeah. And, and we'll make you a GP. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm in. Right. Let's see, let's see if we like this. Good. And we did. We raised capital. So that's kind of what I love doing, mm. including these things. And then you came to the lodge. Just think about it. kind of makes you... Well, it's got to get you into a learning state, get you away from the hustle and bustle of life into a place of true recreation. It puts people in a place of success or removes the excuses. Uh, you get people in there and so, you know, they like it, they enjoy it, but you get a lot of other people in there and it's like, you know, you probably can't think of going to work any other way now, which is really what you want. Um, Cause you know, kind of talking about, we talked about earlier, people struggle, they struggle in business. Part of that is getting the office, part of that's get up every day, but some people just see, you know, can't seem to get ahead. I know you're working on a concept now. It's like this quantum leap, showing people yeah. how to basically, you know, leapfrog, yeah. big jump, all that stuff. Talk about that. Where'd that come from? What does that mean? Do you know in life there's certain seasons, I'm sure you're the same way, where you just get fascinated by something. Yes. Right? And I met a, a, a great psychologist here in Dallas, Texas. I started studying his work called named Price Pritchett. He was a clinical psychologist uh, and decided that he 
didn't want to go into that business. He wanted to take that and go into the business world. And he kept talking about having a seat at a bigger table. Mm. Like he was looking. And for him, that was mergers and acquisition. It wasn't just being a psychologist to people. Right. It wasn't just helping them with their personal problems. It was kind of like getting over to the boardroom, big mergers and acquisitions. And he wrote a book in 89 called You Squared. And somebody gave me the book. It's like, you got to read this book. So I read the book. Little did I know they sold like 14 million copies of that book. Self-published. Wow. And so I became fascinated with it. Like, who's not interested in a quantum leap? Like, you're in the mortgage business. Like, who's not interested in going from zero to 50 million? Right. Or 50 million to 100 million? Right. Not incremental growth. Sure. It's not exciting. So I started going, okay, how does one experience a quantum leap, this big jump? And what he does is he gets your mind open to to trying differently versus working harder. If you're a grinder, it's like the way I'm going to do it is work harder, which is me. Sure. He comes along, it's like, no, we need to try differently. So here's an example he uses. Company A's uh, growing at 7% year over year, incremental growth. Company B's growing at 7% year over year. Company A then goes and purchases company C. They then grow at 80% in one year. That's a quantum leap. Me going from making uh, $2,500 a a month to my first speaking engagement where they paid me more in an hour than I made in a month, right? That's a quantum leap. Yeah. Me getting my first coaching assignment, company said, we want you to come in and be our coach. And remember, I'm a high school basketball coach. Yeah. I'm working 80 hours a week. I'm making $2,500 a month, Uh, right? And that comes down to pennies. Sure. Okay, healthcare company says, we want you to be our coach. We're gonna pay you 144,000, 12,000 a month. We want you to work one week a month coaching our people. That's a quantum leap. Right. So I started becoming fixated and fascinated by how does a person do this? Like, how do you create a quantum leap? And I came back to two things. Okay. One, a person walks into your life and brings you a new method. Oh. Think about it in your life. You're going along. You learn from this coach. And they go, do it this way, Brian. And you jump. 10 million, 20 million. Learn it this way. Boom, boom. And so when you cut, somebody walks into your life and gives you a new method. Right. That you didn't know. Right. Number two, you meet a person. And that person introduces you to a whole new group of people. Mm -hmm. When I spoke at 10X in 2018, 10,000 people, relationship with Cardone, immediately that's a quantum leap. I go from being unknown to known. Right. Okay. And it generates more in an hour than I'd ever done. We onboarded more customers in one hour than we had ever onboarded. We couldn't even handle it. Right. It was like it was like six hundred customers at one time trying to log on to the Every system. Every business person's a dream and nightmare. And I'm at like, the same what? Time, right? And like we didn't even like we did we were so unprepared for that. Right. It's like we we enrolled people who couldn't speak English. Did you expect that when you hit the stage? No. If y'all said, Hey, best case scenario, I no, man. Overnight it was just boom. I was just excited to speak. And I thought, I'm gonna go up here and give it a good shot. You know, it's I mean, it's everybody. Damon John, Mylette, yeah, yeah. Cardone. Whoever, Bradley, Frazella. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's everybody. And it's like, boom. That and that a, yeah. that was a quantum leap. Quantum leap, quantum launch, but you almost did it too big, too fast. But you, to your point, it's like you can go from zero to 100 with those people, that stuff here and there quickly, and people need to That's think right. like that. And they don't think like that. Mm. People are trained to think incremental. So let me give an example. Build this greatness factory. I start talking to people. Man, I want to grow these things. Right. Everybody says, well, build the first one. Get it up and get it going. Mm-hmm. Make sure it's successful. Mm-hmm. Okay. Starbucks, how many do they open per day? We work, when we work came along, didn't open one at a time. Sure. They open 30 at a time. Mm-hmm. So the, the traditional thinking is you got to do it one at a time. You go partner with the right partners, Brian, and next thing you know, you pick up 25 million more of business sure. through one person, one relationship. So I like to say, the key to the many is to the one. Yep. You get the one dude. There's going to be people who see this, me and you go, why is, why is that dude not coaching me? I want to come back to this in a minute on systems. That's something I want to talk about. But staying on this piece about people not thinking like a quantum leap and stuff, a lot of people struggle personally and professionally to get ahead and make progress and there's no goal or yeah. nugget and they become stagnant, like just yeah. stagnant. What what causes people to do that? How do you get them out? Well, it's, it's interesting because that's what we coached on today. Yeah. Right, right with the team. It's like, why does a person become stagnant right what is the causation of stagnation well think of it like this there's a period of life where you grind it out this is the only way you know how to do it and it's necessary correct you get to a point of stability it's like i finally made it i can breathe 
I can pay the bills. Right? Sta- the, the stability, there's one or two options where people go from here. The stability breeds complacency. Complacency, a gradual settling to a place of mediocrity. Remember this, satisfied needs never motivate. That's right. Only unsatisfied needs. Correct. So some people get to stability and go, I'm there. We're good. Some people get to stability and go, I'm sickened by this. I'm never there. I hate it. I'll, now I go looking for the quantum leap. Mm. Okay. So really what I coached your team through today was the seven phases of why people stagnate. What is the causation of that stagnation? What do you do when you stagnate? Right. Mm-hmm. We coach through the passion cycle and we kind of work through that and, and, you know, ask your team, like, what did they get from today? And every one of them said, man, I'm thinking about why I stagnate. I'm thinking different right now because first step is awareness. Yep. I've stagnated. Right. Now, what's the causation of this stagnation? And, and that is what so many people do. It's like slow growth. I'm stuck. You know, it's like I can't get out of this cycle. Passion, duty, burden, commitment. That is the passion cycle. Started with passion, went to duty, went to burden. Now I got to get back home to commitment, man. So for people that are watching this, I mean, your growth curve and boom has been pretty big over the past few years. For maybe the people that aren't there yet are asking questions or look at this, like what systems do you use personally and professionally to keep it in order to move the needle? What does that look like for you? And what can people like start thinking about? Yes, I want to take the leap, yeah. but I got to have stuff to do right. every day to protect it. Well, one of the first things I figured out when I left athletic coaching. So think of this as an athletic coach. This is a game of probability. Mm-hmm. Selling is a game of probability. See, I have a set of plays. I'd run the plays. We'd chart the plays. Did the play work? Did the play not work? If it worked, we kept running. If it didn't work, we quit running. Then I get into the business world. I'm like, nobody's got any plays. Mm -hmm. Like this is like we need a selling system. So one of the first things I did is I created a selling system called Tactical Connection, a series of actions that you take every day. Mm -hmm. Hit list, farm club, top 25, red zone, um, connectors, blue marlins, level 10s. And you work this system, and the system drives up the probability of making a sale. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of systems out there. You got the core; that's a system, great, great. which is a it's 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 all semantics to me. Sure, what they're doing and what I'm doing is very similar. Right, right. Maybe I add in person of interest, which is a little different. But but at the end of the day, we're saying, Brian, if you do these things every day, you're going to drive up the probability of winning. Right. How many people you talk to? How good are you explaining value? How good are you at follow-up and conversion? Mm-hmm. How good are you engaging with people after the sale? How good are you at becoming known in the marketplace? How good are you at generating leads? Every business has to do the same thing. So the systems we use are systems that I created because it's like I was coaching businesses who didn't have these systems. Right. That's true. For you, I think, you know, what I've noticed as well is, is, is you know, you really want people to be Olympians and A players. I know there's a lot of A players, B players, C players and all that. Trying to separate that for me, trying to separate that for you. Um, when people say, like, I always say, you know, people say they want to be an Olympian, they want to be an all-star, top producer, whatever it is. But what that really means is they want to be an A player. They want to be the ones that are on top, getting it done, get it all squared away. So, I mean, obviously from a from a, a sports standpoint, one of the things you talk about is how do I take people pro? How do you go pro? Tell me what that means when people are listening. How, what's that concept? How does it work? And how do you separate, you know, the A's from the B's? Somewhere along the way, I was talking to somebody. And, you know, sometimes I can, I'm a coach. I'm going to create tension right. in people. I don't mind if people don't like it. My job is to move the needle, right? Mm-hmm. That's my job. Mm-hmm. I'm, and sometimes I got to create tension to move the needle, frustration, uh, just like a great athletic coach does. And so somewhere along the way, I just said, man, what you got to do is leave your amateur desires behind. You're, you're, this is amateur hour. You don't show up. You don't prospect. You don't follow up. You don't convert. You whine too much. And the word decide means to kill something off. Decision means to cut something away. And so I'm like, you got to leave your amateur desires behind and freaking make a decision to go pro, man. Well, here's what occurred to me. Very few people know what a, what it looks like to go pro. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Have you ever worked with a pro? How do they prospect? We used to have this day where people would pay, I don't know, 10 or 15,000 bucks and come and spend the day with me. Mm -hmm. They wanted to, we called it work with a pro. Yeah. Here's what I said. Number one, I'm not going to talk to you. And they're like, what? I'm like, you're paying to watch me work. This is not social hour. Mm. I'm going to meet with you at lunch for one hour. I'll meet with you at the end. That's it. That's the deal. 
at the end of the day, these are insurance people, mortgage people, real estate. One of the top, uh, you know, guy, guy run a $500 million branch up in Michigan came down and spent the day with me. Yeah. At the end, I said, what did, what's the big takeaway? He said, I don't work like you do. Wow. He said, man, I don't prospect like you do. I don't video. I don't text message. I don't work the phones. I don't like the way, the pace and intensity yeah. that you go at the number of people you touch in a day, how fast it's moving. He said, what you really did for me is, is reinstall a work ethic in me. Mm. This is how you got to work. Well, it occurred to me when, that's what everybody said. Yep. It didn't matter who came and spent the day with me. Yep. I don't work like you do. So I go, okay. The problem is people have never worked with a pro. Mm. Like I've spent time with billionaires sh yeah. shadowing the billionaire. How do they work? How do they talk? Well, they start with their companies and they, they, they co they're coaching all day and they're doing deals and they're moving and they're circulating. They're never sitting there. They're moving. Who are some of the okay. pros that you work with, just so people understand if they've never run into them? And you've worked with so many on a Mount Rush, yeah. a ton of them. Golly. It's, it's like Grover. Grover, for sure. Pro. Uh, Cardone. Yeah. These are animals, man. These people are animals. Right. Okay. It's like, dude, that's just crazy. Like seeing what Cardone does in that in that sales bullpen, the marketing, what he's willing to do on marketing. You know, one of the things I respect about him, whether you like him or not, is he'll do a webinar on a Saturday. He'll go, I'm going to do $2 million on the webinar. Mm. If it's scheduled for three hours and he hasn't hit that number, he'll keep going. He'll right. go five hours right. on a Saturday. That's a pro. And a dude that's worth a billion dollars. Right. We'll just, right? He'll just keep doing it. So all of those guys are animals. Grover, Milet, no matter, no matter who it is. They're all animals in their own way, right? Yeah. Which is why they're up here. Yep. So what I do is I'm around these people. I'm like, all right, he's really good at this. She's good at that. This one's good at that. How do I take a little piece of that? Right. But the but the pros have a steam in the engine. Right. No matter where it comes from. Yeah, yeah, because, I mean, hard work is never not sexy. And then when you get around it, it rubs off on you one way or the other. I think it pushes you up or out. Yeah. But getting around those folks, to your point, is super important to see what it's really like to be around a pro. And then you kind of piece little things from them and pour it into yours and make it your own and then decide, is this the direction I want to go? But you don't right. know until you've witnessed it firsthand. Um, you know, one of the many things I like about you, I mean, coaching me, I, I look at you as just, I mean, a professional motivator, but a concept coach. And I, I want to hang on that for, for a minute because it's not something a lot of people talk about. I think yeah. it separates you big time. I think it's helpful to a lot of people. You talk in analogies and connecting the dots and all these things, but you're obviously a smart, motivated guy. You have a different way of thinking and activating people, but you have so many concepts. Some of my favorite are, you know, person of interest, A to B, package your purpose, uh, flip, flip the switch. Where do all these come from? How do you come up with it and how do you constantly stay engaged and find ways to connect that down on the concepts so from 18 to 25 i fell in love with the work of a guy named stephen covey covey wrote the seven habits he was so deep first things first principal center leadership mm -hmm. and i was studying these things at a very deep deep level i mean i'm a kid this is 18 years old right like wow. most 18 year olds are not studying covey right. and so i just fell in love with it and i thought i was learning the habits i thought i was learning principles then uh, at 28 years old, I go to a coaching event. I go, I need some business coaching. Uh, 25, I said, I need some, you know, I need to go back and get business. So I started my doctorate. So I'm like, I need to go get formally educated in business. I'm a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. So I started kind of getting involved in the business world. I need business coaching. I need to get a degree in business. I need to do this. 28, I go to a coaching event and the guy says, before you become known, learn how to position by concept. Most people didn't know who James Clear was until he wrote Atomic Habits. Right. Think of all the great concepts, good to great, five dysfunctions of teams, 10X, um, how to win friends and influence people, think and grow rich. Right. These are incredible concepts. So I started, then I went through Strategic Coach, and he was big on we give everything a unique name, and we make everything a unique process. Right. So if you have a concept like you do, you position by concept, Right. And we're working on other concepts for you. Right. The concept solves a problem for the for the world. And people start going, that's the dude who's a specialist. Mm -hmm. Specialists make specialized money. Right. Generalists make general money. Amen. So you are not just a mortgage guy. You're really a specialist with a unique background, like a Navy SEAL. 
And the reason people know to come to you is because you create these concepts, right? And you're doing podcasts and you're becoming person of interest. And now when people think about this, they think about you, mm-hmm. right? Like people think Prey Drive about Coach Burke. Correct. Like person of interest. Correct. When I think about Pritchett, you squared quantum thinking. Mm-hmm. So what happens is we become known in the world because we created a concept. Mm. And that's why when I started coaching mortgage people, I'm like, man, let's get out of the commoditization of this. Let's position you over here Mm -hmm. versus over there. Everybody's over there. Everybody's saying we could do it better and faster. And we got great operations teams and blah, blah, blah. Heard it, right? Everybody says that. Yep. Like, who are stone cold killers? Right. Because they are experts at this. If yours is anticipation, which I really believe it is. I agree. Look ahead. Come back and package it up. Take something complicated. Feed people information so they can make a decision, a confident decision, right? That makes you a person of interest because there's not a lot of people who do that. And the more you package it, the more you become known for that. I agree. Okay. And you articulate it so well. I think that's one of the things that, you know, not only is the concept and showing people, but you articulate it well. Obviously, it's not your first rodeo, but you're able to connect the dot for people well or it's not clunky, which is good. Yeah. Well, well, I learned that. that I, I never finished my – I got on a roll there. Uh, I actually, looking back in my life, all of my buddies, Bradley, Andy Elliott, Grover, they all kept saying the same thing to me. Man, the way you package ideas is yeah, incredible. It is. So it, I couldn't see it. They could see it. And they started saying, hey, can you help me package that? I remember Bradley saying, man, I'd be a billionaire if I could package ideas like you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I started asking, where did that come from? I thought I was learning those seven habits of highly effective people with Covey, but Covey was a master at packaging concepts, the way he packaged it. 200 years of success leadership packaged into seven habits. Yeah, It's incredible. That's where I was learning it. It was coming into me, and then it kind of manifested uh, in my early 40s of like, this dude is a specialist at packaging. It reminds me of like a Spielberg movie producer, director. It's in here, and they're able to get it on camera and yep. connect the dots and put it all together. And it's really, really, I mean, you do an excellent job of it, but in a business world, it's needed because yeah. it can be flat all the time and the same stuff, and people need something fresh and new, and these concepts are are really helpful. Uh, before we get you out of here, I want to make sure and talk about one of the concepts, probably my favorite, but I think the one that sticks the landing the most is prey drive, activating mm-hmm. the prey drive. Talk about that. What is that? Uh, how do you activate it? How do you not activate it? What can people do to get that going? 41 years old. I'm sitting in a workshop with a former Vietnam veteran. He was in the war dog division of the Vietnam War. His job was to go ahead of the infantry with a dog. The dog's job was to sniff out bombs, booby traps, ambushes. Imagine the psychology of what you had to tell yourself if that was your job every day. I hope I don't die today. Gosh. Like you think it's hard selling mortgages? Think, right, right. think about waking up in the middle of a jungle and it's you and that animal. Right. And he kept talking about the dog having a prey drive. P-R-E-Y-D-R-I-V-E. And I was like, that is interesting to me. What is it? Right? And and I, so I looked it up and uh, it said an animal's ability to stalk, capture, and kill prey. Mm. That is prey drive. Mm. Here Now I use my gift of association and I go, humans have a prey drive. But it's not stalking capture and killing it's seeing something in the mind that's the imagination or with the eyes that you want and you pursue it with a with an intensity with a persistence and i begin to deconstruct this idea i begin to codify this idea and so i study the top 20 motivational theories there's about 20 they all say the same thing we move toward something we want well, what happens when you have everything you want? You get comfortable. You get satisfied, right? There's yeah. that stability. So I started going, there's something to this. What if What if I could become the leading authority in the world at activating that drive inside of people? Mm-hmm. And so I trademarked it. And if you see me come up with any big names, I trademark almost all of these. Competitive intelligence, uh, the greatness factory, everybody needs a coach in life, um, prey drive. So that means I'm the only person who can talk about it like that. It's crazy. Okay. And, and I go, this is a jackpot. Nobody's talking about this in humans. Sure. And this is what I've been doing my whole life. Wow. As a basketball coach, now as a, a performance coach and business coach and a specialist. So I turned that into a, a book that became a Wall Street Journal bestseller called Flip the Switch. Yeah. It's my first Wall Street Journal bestseller. And uh, people loved it, man. Yeah. So now we're turning it into clothing lines. Uh, you know, Janet convinced me to turn it into merchandise and, and bracelets and clothes and and uh i love it 
because Sharon Lecter wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad for Kiyosaki. Mm. You know, she and I are friends. And it's so funny because at 31 years old, I was buying her books on how to grow your financial IQ. At 41 years old, I was sitting ha- having dinner at her house. And she called me one day or texted me one day. She said, you are a prey drive. That is who you are. Mm. And it took me 18 books, Brian, to come into who I am. Yeah. Like, that is who I am. I am prey drive. So now when you have a mastery of something, it's very natural to teach it. Yeah. So I, I started saying I'm the leading authority in the world at activating that drive. Now, for your listeners, there's somebody out there right now that had it and lost it. They've reached a stagnation point. And I don't care how much money you're making, by the way. I've coached people worth $300 million that lost their prey drive. So it's not associated with money. That's a misconception. Oh, Brian, you're just doing this for the money. Sure. Listen, you're doing it because there's something inside of you, man, that wants to go all the way. Right. Where that comes from, we could line up 10 different psychologists and they'd all tell you 10 different things. Right. But there's something inside of you that wants to be the best at what you do. And there's a chip inside of you that's like, boom, I got to go get it. Well, I believe that is in a lot of people, but it has not been activated. Got it. It's latent. Mm. It's undeveloped. Yeah. See, what I was doing with your team today was trying to, you know, she'll tell you, man, I was, you know what I'm saying? I'm working that psychological muscle. I'm trying to dig in. I'm trying to challenge a person. And I want a person to go, damn it, I'm in. I'm. It's time for me to go. Yeah. Right? That is what I love doing. And so that's what I become known for. So at your level, what's ne- next for you? What's what's going on this year, next year? Where are you headed? What are you doing? What's your next big goal? Yeah. And where do you want to go? Yeah, I call that the NBO, the next big opportunity. Nice. I just accepted a, a position as a, on the board of directors of a publicly traded company. Congrats. Uh, AI technology for healthcare, I think could, it's called Hitsy. Um, you could buy stock in that right now. Um, and I think it can go. I really do. Good. And it's, and they brought me in, I'm coaching the CEO and working with him, helping him raise capital. It's fun. It's a new game. Mm. I've never been on the publicly traded company side, mm. uh, but that's a side that can, I'm telling you can go, man, once it gets going, solves a real problem. So that's something I'm excited about. I'm excited about greatness factories. Right. Okay. We're building greatness factories. We're, we're looking at licensing greatness factories. So if you're out there and you're interested in that, that could be an option. And then I've got confidence factories oh. for kids. Oh. We got our first two license uh, licensees, uh, one in Philly, one in Maryland. These are physical places where you take kids, like you know, like you take them to karate, like you take them there, and we take all of our curriculum, all of my work with kids. We package it up, and then you have this uh, place where kids can go to build, maintain, and protect their confidence. Jeez, man, the wheels never stop turning, do they? Well, it's like that's what I did as a as a basketball coach, man. I just produced great kids. Yeah. I mean, like my kids sat in the front one third of their seat. They made eye contact. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. Their first ones, their last ones to leave. It's like, how do you produce that? Love it. And now since I have three kids, it's like I see the need, man. Yep. And I'm dad. Yep. You know, that's it. It's impacted me, man. I can't uh, tell you how much I appreciate it. I mean, appreciate the time today. Every time we sit down, I'm always motivated. I'm always inspired. My prey drive is on just you know, soaring, yep. uh, which is good, man. So before we get out of here, if people want to connect with you, sign up with you, follow you, go, go, to, go to your events, social website, all that stuff, where can they find you? I would go to coachbert.com. It very clearly says on there, book a strategy call. Okay. Okay. I still talk to people every day. Right. Uh, you could tell people I'd still text you. Right. Right. I engage with people. It's like texting, following up. I do calls with people. Our team does calls with people every day. We generate probably, you know, let's say 1,500 leads a month for the coaching business. And uh, so I'd book a strategy call. Tell me what you're trying to do, and let's see how we can help you. Social Coach Bird on everything? It's at, yeah, I mean, it's at Michael Bird. My mother spelled my name differently. Uh, and she said, I always wanted you to be different. She spelled my name M-I-C-H-E-A-L, Bert. So it's at Michael Bird on Instagram. But if you search Coach Michael Bird, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere. Every, everywhere you could imagine. Amazing, man. Thank you, brother.